All right, so this particular section, you've got a few chapters, um, or not chapters, points to cover here. The first is list the questions to answer when considering immigration. So we've actually mentioned quite a few now. Yes, right, you'll see they've actually given you um, some guidance in terms of what should you consider when maybe deciding to immigrate or wanting to immigrate. Okay, we'll look at research done before immigrating. So what do you actually need to do? Immigrating is not easy to do. There's a lot of documentation that you need to submit just to get the application in. Once the application's in, then they still need to approve it before then giving you the go-ahead in terms of moving your your assets and immigrating. All right, so explain what happens in SA assets that we need to look at. We need to look at the financial factors to consider about SA, and we need to look at things considering the foreign currency, okay, because we're looking at SA going to another country. All right, and then obviously the advantages and disadvantages. All right, so the first bit, do you have plans to immigrate? No, I have plans, not at the moment. Not at the moment. No. Okay, so ever thought about living or retiring in another country? Okay, retiring there in England. Okay, so why do you want to retire there? Okay. Okay, so why aren't you looking at getting that passport then? That British passport. Because yeah. yeah. surely if you had the British passport, you would be, um, maybe it would be easier for you to perhaps immigrate or live or retire in that particular country. Yeah, I was, getting, I was thinking about that. It's a little easier. Yeah, so. I think to work a few times to get free transport, I'm not too sure what the, yeah, the requirements are for that as a benefit. Okay, but. but I'm not saying that. But, I'm not going into that. Okay, yeah, that's what I was just going to ask. Okay, so you, you, you're wanting to retire and immigrate there because as an old person, you'd be able to travel wherever you like. Yeah, travel. Okay, so that's a benefit, but that's just one benefit. But what are the other reasons why you would think about retiring there? Why would you retire there, not here or somewhere else? What's the weather like in England? It's not cloudy and misty in that. It's not great. It's cold, very cold in winter. Okay, so you just said you like the warmth rather than the cold. But then I'm about to stay here then. Yes. So if you're looking at retiring or living in another country, you're considering weather as being a factor. You're considering transport as being a factor. So what do we consider when choosing different places or countries? It's the benefit that that country can provide. Right, so if you're looking at all of these different Continents. Okay, North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, and Australasia. Okay? Australia and New Zealand make up Australia. I never knew that. You didn't know that? I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, that's from geography. Okay, because remember, Australia isn't Australia. Aust Australia is just one country of Australia. Australasia. Okay, because Austria, Malaysia makes up. So it's not only it's not only um, it's not only uh, New Zealand and Australia, but also some of the smaller island nations. Okay. I think um, uh, the rugby sevens, Fiji. I think Fiji is also part of Austria, Malaysia. Okay, because it's part of that 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 that, that place. Okay, so if we look at all of these continents, okay. You've obviously chosen North America and Europe. Europe. Okay, those are your first and second choices. Right, why wouldn't you consider these others? Well, Australia is not talking about them in South America. It's not really there. South America is the biggest country there. I don't know that place. Asia, I also haven't been there. I don't know what to say. Africa? Okay, but I mean, like other countries, I mean, Africa is massive. What about like retiring in Morocco? <laughs> or Egypt? Or Ethiopia? <laughs> okay, possibly. Or what about Namibia, our neighbor? Botswana, that's pretty much close to as Africa as you can get. Okay. Alright, so do you agree? 
the different continents offer different benefits. Okay, it might be weather, it might be climate, it might be uh, goods and services. All right, so obviously in Africa, if you're retiring, okay, in, old, in your old age, what are you going to be doing? Okay, exactly. All right, so depending on what you prefer, maybe if you like wildlife, the outdoors, maybe Africa is the right place to retire then. So, okay. Hey. Well. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah. Can you imagine retiring down there, Amanus? Yeah, nice. Okay. And in the UK. It's just fun. I've been on the beaches. It's not nice, golden sand, and the winters are colder here. See, sir. Summer, a good day in England is like 25 degrees. See, so, so now you're trying to weigh up the pros and the cons in terms of is weather what I'm looking at, or is it other? Obviously, you would maybe consider retiring or leaving or living in the UK because of transport, transport. maybe infrastructure, yeah, infrastructure. maybe um, technology. Um, Internet co connectivity, um, uh, maybe public health care, yeah. All right, there could be other reasons. So it all depends on what, what is your focus. Okay, so if your focus is safety, then you'll look at a safe country. Okay. All right, affordability and access. So if we look at affordability and access, what do we need to actually immigrate? How much do you need to immigrate? Okay, you need capital okay, to immigrate. Yeah. Right. Countries aren't willing to accept foreigners without some sort of benefit for the country. Okay, because think about it from the country's point of view. If the country is going to let anyone into the country and live in the country and make that country a home, that individual needs to contribute something to the country right you can't have so for example let's say let's say South Africa was the best place to immigrate to and to and to retire okay so now do you agree we're gonna have a whole bunch of people from all across the world from everywhere all coming to South Africa to retire yeah. but are they gonna be doing anything productive Besides living and doing day-to-day -day activities, they're not contributing to the economy, really. Okay, maybe they're supporting the economy in terms of purchases, but that's about it. Okay, but they're not working, they're not productive, and they're old as well, so they're not, um, let's say, contributing and as healthy as the, as the youth. All right, so do you agree countries need to have some sort of, not control, but requirement in terms of um, who will I allow to? Who will, I allow, who will I allow to actually live in the country? Okay, that's something to consider. Right, so access. Is access given to all? No. Sometimes access can be restricted. Okay? Because you need to apply to enter that particular country. Right, and they do that. Why? It's to help control too many people immigrating to certain places. Right, so not anyone can move to the UK or the US. Why? You need capital. It needs to be affordable. Right, so now what happens if you've got enough to immigrate to that country? Now, what happens then? They won't allow you to go there, right? I think they won't allow you to go there. No, but what happens then? You still need to find work. You still need to do something productive. Okay, and would you be allowed to work? Possibly. Okay. That could be a consideration. Right, but that's affordability. Obviously, cost of living in the UK and the US would be higher than li maybe living in South Africa. Correct. All right, so how do we choose a country to immigrate? There's so many countries around the world. You need to have a list. Okay, and your list needs to cover different topics in terms of climate, weather, 
facilities, infrastructure, education maybe, security, healthcare, there's such a lot. Okay, so you would choose a country based on your list of requirements. Okay, so what does what does the African Reserve Bank do? They they Correct. Okay, they need to manage that the exchange. Okay, so rands, ZAR. Okay, there are specific rules and regulations that limits the amount of assets that can be moved abroad. Why do they do that? So it Africa. Correct. It's to keep country. it's to keep the wealth inside the country. Okay, so it's to avoid an outflow of capital from SA to other places. Okay, they need to control that somehow. They need to try to protect South Africa's resources. Okay, so what happens to assets that are left behind? They're sold and transferred to capitalize Okay, capital gains. Okay, you've you've seen to have disposed of those assets. Okay. All right, additional immigration costs, uh, maybe just to cover that, customs, admin, legal, and exchange rates. Okay, those are some things to consider when moving money across. Okay, then the last bit here is obviously the summary. We looked at retirement planning last week. Yes. Do you still remember what that focus is on? Oh, and it's like your and stuff. Yes. Okay, okay, providing for the future. Provide. Good. Okay, so there were some pitfalls and considerations we discussed. And now today we looked at the immigration planning. Okay, why is immigration considered part of financial planning? Besides that, immigrating to certain countries can offer certain benefits. Right, so that could be seen as financial planning. Okay, so maybe you haven't provided sufficiently for health care. Okay, but you might find a country that you could immigrate to that maybe has free health care right, or better health care, better public health care. So that could be an option maybe for planning. Okay, or maybe, maybe let's say our rands. Our rands are worth a lot in Zimbabwe. Okay, or our rands are worth more in, uh, let's see, the rand is also stronger than... Um, okay, none of the big countries like Australia, New Zealand, um, not even China, India. Okay, our rand, our rand is stronger than the Indian rupee. Okay, so immigration could be a consideration. So why not immigrate to India? India? Why? Well, every rand that we have will be worth more in that country. So we could maybe extend our retirement further because the cost of living won't be as high as in South Africa. That's financial planning. Okay, so why do why do people in the UK and the US retire in South Africa? They buy houses in Cape Town, Clifton, and all this. Exactly. Okay, they can they can stretch their dollars and pounds, right? Because their dollars and pounds, in terms of buying power and cost of living, would be better for them than it would be in in their own countries, right? So let's say if you were middle class. Middle class in UK in the UK could be upper class in South Africa. South Africa just because your pounds are worth more in South Africa than they were that, that they're worth in the UK okay, yeah. right, in terms of buying power, so cost of living. Okay, I'm sure even you're familiar with that, right? Yes, I'm cost of living in the UK and in America high oh, compared to other countries, right, and that that could be a reason why an American or a, or, or a uh, a person from England would, would consider maybe immigrating somewhere else. Okay, because of cost of living. Okay.